Hello and welcome back to part 2 of the £5 Retro Gaming PC build. Now we saw how easy it was to put together, but needless to say, the next thing is to put windows onto it. This didn't take too long to do, but many people that haven't used an older version of Windows may have yet to understand how frustrating it can be, as even the slightest hiccup can throw the installer off, which is why we actually had to restart the install as it didn't detect the hard drive correctly the first time. Thanks IDE connections. The setup took around 40 minutes, which wasn't bad for something being loaded off a CD that I burned myself. Generally just waiting for the system to load took a little while, and I had to reboot the PC due to it not recognising the mouse, but this resolved any issues that I had, and really it was quite a trouble free install. <laughs> Now once Windows was installed, it quickly became very apparent this monster wasn't going to cut it, and we needed something a little bit older if we were going to be playing the games that don't even support widescreen. So we opted for a 1 to 80 by 1024 monitor, with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. It supports up to 70Hz, and I picked it up for £1 just the other day. The drivers were downloaded from my main PC and burnt to a disc. This was the quickest method that allowed for the PC to be independent and access the internet all by itself. As for the drivers, we installed the latest version of Catalyst and some wireless drivers, which didn't take too long for the system to accept. With one quick restart, all the major components needed for the PC had been installed and were ready to work. After this was done, we fired up the standard Internet Explorer browser that comes installed with Windows XP and installed Steam along with Opera Browser, one of the best browsers available for Windows XP. Finally, once those began to install, it became time to install some games, half of which were done on Steam and half of the others were done on disk. I was surprised how well this worked, as there were no issues with running all these tasks at once, and for £5, if I only needed this PC for web browsing and assorted tasks like that, I'd have no issue using this PC full time. Downloading a variety of programs such as Open Hardware Monitor didn't take very long, and the PC still wasn't sluggish, even when faced with installing Crisis when all this was happening as well as Steam games. I let Crisis have a little run to ensure all the parts were stable, and well, you'll see those results a little bit later on. Also gave the monitor a quick clean as well as it was a little bit dirty and we just need to get rid of a few of those smears if we were going to be recording off it later on. Installing a few more games didn't take much longer. As well, we opted for Halo and Metal Gear Solid 2, the latter of which I found out to have recurring issues with ATI cards due to a lazy port from the developers. They stuck too close to the OG Xbox's original architecture and thusly it didn't support ATI cards at the time, only Nvidia's, and that means our ATI Radeon X800 just won't boot the game here. Browsing through Steam for some games was easy and didn't cause any issues, which does on some PCs, it can actually slow them down. Usually not often, but it can happen. And uh, we even had time to check out the Steam store. Next came downloading Fraps as we needed to benchmark these games later on. Finally Half-Life 2 was done downloading, so we let it install all the components it needed to, to get that out of the way and ensure we didn't have to wait for it to do that later on. A few Microsoft distributors needed to install next, and we found a way to pass the time with the included pinball game that everyone remembers. And finally, as mentioned beforehand, Halo needed to be installed, and once again gave us no issues, something that can actually happen if you're not an administrator in later versions of Windows such as 7, 8 and 10. But as interesting as those installations were, let's move on to some benchmarks. Half-Life 2 up first, which ran, well, flawlessly. With averages of 46 FPS, the game was silky smooth for the majority of the time spent playing, and it was only incredibly heavy physics effects that really brought down our FPS to a slow, but only brief 17 FPS. This game would attack these components upon their release, and really it just goes to show how well they've aged. Halo Combat Evolved running at high with 1280 by 1.024 resolution. You would have an average of 82 FPS with small dips down to the high 50s when there was a lot of action going on. The game felt very smooth on this 75Hz monitor and the visual just looked amazing compared to the original Xbox version. I can really just say if you haven't tried the PC version of Halo just give it a go, it is amazing and holds up incredibly well to this day. Finally gaming wise we had Crisis and well if your retro PC can run this game, 
I'd say it's pretty much safe to run any retro game you want it to. We started out with medium settings, but these yielded us FPS in the mid-twenties. However, lowering the game to a mixture of medium and low settings made the game look much more appealing, as it hovered just below 40 frames per second, only dropping to the high 20s and low 30s when the game effects got very heavy, so I'd say just about any retro game you want is playable on this system. Finally, for practical use such as web browsing, it worked fine. It was quick to Google with, as we discovered earlier, as me Googling for stuff such as the patch for Metal Gear Solid 2 returned results instantly. However, it was near this point we began to have issues, which you'll soon see. Videos. This thing could play Crisis, but video performance in 2017 is abysmal. With 480p proving to be a challenge and 360p being the only option that doesn't give you frame drops, but for £5 you get what you pay for, and older technology just can't decode like the newer stuff can. And so it's no powerhouse, it's no multimedia supercomputer, but what is is something nostalgic to me, and a PC that will have constant use no matter what. So thank you very much for watching this video. This has been Hamish from Budget Builds, good night. Thank you very much to each and every one of you subscribers, as within less than one week the sub count on this channel has more than doubled. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this, and I'll hope to see you all in the next video.